Uh, do we have time for one last question? One more question. It's yours. Steve Thompson. Uh, it was a great presentation, Gary. I congratulate you. Um, the most important thing, at least to me in your presentation, and it was uh, very well said again, is the inability to test the equipment on partial load conditions. Um, I'm from the pump sec sector of the uh, industry. Just to give you an update through AHRI and Gamma, we're actually, I'm chairing a fluid pump section, and we're actually going to write a standard on a um, load profile efficiency on pumps for the United States. So, for example, you might have a energy classification A, which would be the highest efficient pump based on partial load conditions, low load, maximum outputs. The next step after that would be to take that efficiency standard and go to the Energy Star people and say, here's what we have. So what we have to do, and it's in its, it's, in its infancy right now, but we're writing a test procedure, um, getting all that done. So there are parts of the industry that are actually looking at that, writing that partial load condition efficiency standard, because right now there's no way to measure it. And the only way uh, people like Energy Vermont can do a uh, uh, incentive program is to take two buildings and make one efficient and leave one the way it was and run it for a year and test it and report those results. And that's not necessarily the best way to do it. So I commend you both for your, your vision on understanding that that's the challenge the industry's got. And this is partial load thing. And don't believe the efficiencies that a lot of us manufacturers uh, will tell you because it's under ideal conditions. So congratulations. Thank you all very much. And You've been great. Evgeny, who's done research on this, has, has developed the standard uh, for integrated mechanical systems in Canada, will be here and part of the panel we're doing on combi systems. So, because the Canadians have addressed a standard that looks at um, partial load conditions. Thank you Thank all you. very much. Thank you, Gary and Linda. Uh, there are products from American companies on the market today with multiple heat exchangers, so you don't have that, that cross-contamination issue. They also have uh, can do have a solar assist in the water heater, and, and those are even more common in Europe, where they have these combination devices that are just appliances, plug and play. Thank you both for being here today. Um, let me ask you, um, as an engineer, uh, of you know an innovative new system. The, tell, tell me the value of being able to come and present it to uh, people you know, such as yourself at an event like this. One of the big benefits is that people uh, who are at the Emerging Technology Symposium are thinking outside of the normal boxes and silos. So they almost always come up afterwards, if not during a presentation, and give you three good ideas. So the reason that I explore new ideas in front of a group like this is to get their ideas. Um, that's how you get better and better and you answer more and more of their questions every year and in 10 years we'll have good answers, maybe five if we're lucky. It's just a great way to find out who shares the same interests and the same passions and it's amazing I think how many things have started by effective conferences bringing people together and get providing a forum to throw out ideas and get the, you know, the people that are all passionate to sort of end up moving on key issues. Yeah, let me turn the table and then say how is it for you to be a member of the audience then and have these same things pitched to you? Again, it's the same thought. It, it, it makes me think about things I wouldn't normally think about. Um, the topics cover a wide range of things, not all that I normally work on. And so new ideas come to me because of the interconnections. Um, the single biggest thing to me when I, I'm in a group of people is I try to find people who are not like me they don't live my world. They live in a different world, similar but different. And it's the interconnections among the worlds that make a huge difference in what we can do going forward. Almost every failure I see in the systems I work on in hot water has to do with the connections between the components, not the components themselves. And it, it, it's that that makes this very interesting to sit in the audience. And for me, I'm totally new to, I don't know, even, it, I am. I am. Iatmo. Iatmo. Obviously, I'm very new to it. So for me, just to realize that the organization exists and understand the, you know, that what its purpose is and intent is, is just a tremendous opportunity for me to be able to begin to think about linkages and networking that hadn't existed prior to that. So it's a, it's a real treat and a real, um, a, a real benefit for me to be able to be here. Good. That's one of the reasons that we, I'm on the, the, the steering committee for the Hot Water Forum, which is gonna be here in two days, right? Um, and one of the reasons we wanted them to be back-to-back -back was so that there'd be some interconnection and overlap. 
uh, very different audiences normally never speak to each other. And the idea is to get folks to speak to each other who are related but not normally seeing each other. Cross-fertilization. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you both for being here.